Well, hey, y'all, are this afternoon. This is your old buddy George Jones over here at the Bergen Gun Range, looking dead into the sun as usual. Uh, for my next installment on, hey, I got this OU's gun. The OU's gun today we're going to look at is a 30 caliber carbine. Now, how many 30 caliber carbine videos have you seen on here? Well, three that I can think of, and it's going to be four after you watch this one. So let's look at this old carbine and see how to, what it's actually worth and, and what the origin of this one is. This is a U.S. carbine caliber 30 M1. And this is, in fact, a GI 30 caliber carbine. This one's manufactured by Inland Manufacturing Division, uh, which I believe is part of General Motors. Uh, it is, in fact, a World War II well, the base of it is a World War II carbine. Uh, most GI 30 caliber carbines that you see, they didn't manufacture any 30 caliber carbines after, after World War II. They made so many of them during World War II, it wasn't necessary to make any more after the war, and it wasn't necessary to make any more during the Korean conflict. So let's look at the condition of this one overall. First of all, the top cover has been replaced because, well, because the original top cover on it probably got busted somewhere along the lines, as many of them do. Uh, a World War II style top cover is a single rivet, and a, and a later one is a double rivet construction, okay? The rivet that holds the piece of metal on that holds it on there. Uh, the bayonet lug assembly, this is a Korean period change, okay? Uh, the front sight, I think what they call this is the, this is the composite one. This is actually, this piece is actually a bent formed piece of sheet metal and it's been welded to this front sight block, okay? And of course it's got a, uh, a pin in it, which is what holds it on there. There's a woodruff key in there too and that, you know, in order to get this off there, you got to drive that pin out drive the front side off and there's a woodruff key in there that keeps it from turning back and forth. Uh, it is for uh, bayonet M4, I believe is the carbine bayonet. Uh, it has a underwood upright on it. I had the part last night looking at the various parts and looking it up in the Harrison's Guide, you know, it has a M2 machine gun style bolt in it, and it has an M2 stock in it with the cutout up here for the selector switch where it would have gone if it had all the M2 parts in it. It has a cast and milled or forged uh, trigger group in it, and it has a uh, M2 style magazine catch on it a little stud that sticks out right there. That's an M2 catch. And it has the lever type uh, fire selector, which is indicative of late war production or improvement. Okay. Uh, it has a standard uh, late war or after war uh, rear side on it, like it normally would have for Korea and so forth. This rifle is zeroed in. I fired it a little while before. It, I believe it is a 1980s import rifle. Why? Well, I couldn't find blue sky or any other markings on the barrel, okay? And I took this off to continue to look for slitted off fire, you know, and I couldn't find any import marks in the normal places on the barrel where they would be. But this rifle has one of these expedient Korean slings that all of the blue skies and, and so forth that came into the country, Maramon imports and so forth, they all came into the country with this style sling on them. Okay, that's what kind of probably this is the sling original to the gun when it was imported. That causes me to believe that it was imported in the 1980s. Uh, overall, I think it's a pretty good gun. Let's shoot it a little bit. We, we come out here, generally come out here to shoot guns, you know. This little catch right here, if you can see it on camera, that corresponds to that little bulge right there that's on 
a 30 round M2 mag. That gives a little bit more support when it's firing on full auto. So if you see one of these 30 round mags that doesn't have that little dimple on there, then that's just a regular 30 round carbine mag. But if you see it that does have that little dimple on there, if you can see it there, catch it in the shadow just right. There it is. Okay, this is an M3 or M2, M2 full auto mag. All right, let's see if we can't get that in the battery. Huh. It's going to be one of those days. I can see it right now. Get us some ear mufflers on here. And let's see how this old gun shoots at 25 yards. Get some dinger going. Yeah, get some ringer dinger going. Yeah, that's a ringer dinger right there. That's pretty accurate. Alright, let's try a 10 inch swinger on the three plate rack. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that sends them sailing. Let's see if I can get the twirler going. No, it's a little bit too ambitious for it, I think. Yeah, okay. There we go. That's, that's the problem with these guys. The rear sights on them always move under recoil and get you off zero about halfway through the magazine. You know, these, this rear sight assembly is probably 60 years old anyway. Hmm. That could be a dud. Light primer strike. Could be a magnum primer. I found that these guns do not like magnum primers. Little rabbit. Oh yeah. He's... All righty. Get uh, light primer strike one more try here. Get going safe. Let's see if we can get a target impact worked out here. Okay. Get our target impact worked out. And that's it. We are out. I don't know if that worked out or not. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Get it downloaded to the computer. Find out what I actually did. Good shooting, good working rifle after all these years. Uh, all right, what's it worth? Okay. Uh, all of the fittings and hardware are in real good shape. Very little wear on the M2 bolt. Uh, locks back nicely. Detents good and sharp, holds back good. Uh, all the parts on it that are supposed to be GI, and all of them are supposed to be, uh, are in fact good GI. Even the oiler looks nice. Sling, sling's kind of farby, but you know. The butt, the butt plate fits the stock correctly. So the stock hasn't been refinished too awfully many times. Um, the stock, yeah, it's dark. It's dark and it's got a lot of small dings on it, but no cracks, not busted or anything. 
Uh, there is one bad gouge right up here. I don't know what caused that. Uh, wasn't me, thank goodness. Uh, overall, the value of this gun, at least $800 in today's market and probably more. Uh, pretty good overall carbine. Uh, just a little things to be looking for if you're looking at a used carbine, buddy. I've seen some of them for sale on the racks and stores and places. There once in a while a few of them come in. I think uh, Tiger Imports or Royal Tiger Imports or whatever it was, they brought in about seven, eight hundred of them right there floating around someplace. Uh, you know, <clears throat> there's enough of these guys out on the market that I keep making the videos when I find different ones to give you some idea how to grade them out and figure out. I looked at the bore on this gun last night. It looks very nice. This is a good shooter gun. It's what I would call beater grade, but it's nice. It works good. It's worth at least $800, if not some more. Well, all right, then. That's about the size of that. Uh, like, take, share, I comment, state, and subscribe. Uh, leave me an old dollar in the Patreon bucket if you want to. And if you don't want to, I'll keep right on making content for you. Uh, I'm still having fun doing it. As long as it's fun for me to do it, I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, but you help me out there once in a while, buy me a box of shells or something, give me a gallon of gas to mow this place. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, keep a good head on your shoulders. You know, we've lived through these idiots before. We're going to live through them this time. Uh, just, uh, just keep being careful. Be good to your neighbors. These are hard times, and we're trying to get through them. You know, and the more we work together, the better off we're going to be. Uh, God bless everybody and join the NRA. We'll see you now.